so the the reason this is an again by the way is in 2021 last year less than a year ago more than a year ago uh bread witchery put together a very comprehensive google doc that had a ton of stories um a lot of corro corroborated stories information proof d uh, dms about the things that ashley christ was doing in the stream coach academy business okay um this this received a lot of attention but i mean obviously not everyone is going to be able to to read and see everything so this is the original let me actually open an incognito so it doesn't log me in google uh i am a anonymous beaver nice <laughs> to back the whole thing like five years yeah the the damage that ashley christ has done to our industry uh makes my job very hard as someone who has been working really hard to provide um authentic high quality education to streamers it is now there's a terrible what's the word i'm looking for um i'm blanking on the word but there's a terrible stigma against like coaching which is a totally valid business in any industry it is a very normal business in every industry and now it is awful because of mostly her but a lot of other grifters as well in the industry to be fair um so we're gonna go through um the new stuff i will link this here this is the um This is the one that came out last year. Let me run to the restroom. Give me 30 seconds. All right. What's up, Cobalt? I remember warning people about that person and several people subtweeted me. Really? Oh, what's up, Phil? Um, let me see. Hey guys, I just saw this and I have a story about that. I tried to ask for some advice on one of her channels and she, along with her chat, pretty much gaslighted me and bullied me as well. Essentially, when I called them out on this, they banned me completely. She, along with her group, are complete bullies and a fan base who pays money to her just as guilty. Dang, I'm sorry, man. That sucks. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so glad I never paid for anything from her. She once said during a live stream that her advice is only for women. And when I ask why she doesn't she say that in her videos, she timed me out. What? Yeah, she she has me blocked now because I. Um, there's another creator, Gail Level, who does like a lot of streaming uh, videos and he tried he he partnered up with a company that for a giveaway and that company ended up basically ignoring him and not giving him the product and it was a whole thing 
I think they may have eventually gotten back to him, but that company was uh, someone that I saw that Ashton Christ was either promoted or behind or like connected to. And so I, it, she wasn't even tagged in it. It was actually uh, on, I think it was Knackers that I was talking to and I was like, oh, this doesn't surprise me. And, uh, <laughs> and then she blocked me. She's just a cash grabber, yeah. I mean, she is a classic con artist. Very, very classic con artist. Um, okay, so this is what came out last year. Definitely encourage you to read this. Um, what, the things we're gonna go through is gonna be new. I don't know how interesting it is, um, or I just wanna see like the commonalities, I guess. What's up, Braided? How you doing today? We both got blocked, yeah. It, yeah, so anyways, we're going to see if uh, if it's kind of like the same old thing. Remember to use the word alleged, 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 alleged. I mean, everything I'm doing, everything I am reading is uh, I'm reading from this text. So I didn't write this. I'm just reading out loud. Company was warm audio. Uh, what's up, jokester? What's up, realm? How you doing? I'm honestly curious about this because I hadn't heard anything till your tweet. Really? So the the one that so the 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 big one came out a year ago in our industry. By uh, it was put together by Bread Witchery and they did an amazing job uh, gathering all this information. A lot of emotional work, physical and emotional work to put together something like this. Um. So highly encouraged that one. I knew. Okay. Okay, so this one was retweeted by Bread Witchery, which is why I saw it. It came out on June 24th, and um, yeah, no one really saw it because it's not an art industry exactly. It's in Web3, so. But yeah, so she's at it again. So let's, uh, let's open this up and go through and see common uh, practices. Okay, so... They, this person links, I'm assuming, yeah. So th this is all connected here. Um, all right. So for context, mod three is basically a, as far as I can tell, some sort of discord group for web three, where they will um, help community managers and social media managers get opportunities, connect them with NFT, slash web three projects um stuff like that i think we'll we'll get more context as we go through here so let me make this nice and easy to read can i get rid of this outline thing yeah there we go nice and big for you guys all right I put a lot of faith into the mission of Mod3 to improve how people work online, create a more equitable company structure, and provide a resource for Web3 workers. At this point, I feel nothing but regret over how much of myself I put into the project and how many people I onboarded. I feel used. Ashley Christ approached me at the end of December 2021 with a job proposal. We'd worked together as a team to manage Discord slash Twitter for an upcoming play to earn game. I suggested we bring on one more team member who was friends with both of us and we made it a trio. The three of us met, talked about scaling up to take on more clients. Uh, we would find and vet cool projects and connect them with qualified people from the community, taking a small cut off the top while providing official contracts and legal protection, income security. It can be difficult as a freelancer and a steady supply of new opportunities. That small cut ended up being more than what the workers were making in some cases and all the benefits we originally claimed never materialized. Hmm. Weird. I knew who the coach was before I clicked. I'm glad that's, that people are already aware of this person. I'm glad. Um, okay, so we have a mod three clients, a list of clients, monthly budget here, um, when the payment is due and okay, something about payments. Next day, Ashley started a Discord server and added us as admins with the idea we were starting this group together. We talked about being decentralized, working with each other, the future of how business should run. Things went okay at first. I built a lot of the early server 
we started work on our first client. Our server reached a couple hundred members in a few days on the promise of steady, equitable work and educational resources. Oh. It hurts me because it's just, it makes it my job so much harder when you, when you taint education and resources. You're tainting these words. We didn't even have a name yet. She just titled the server work in progress when she made it. So I started a community initiative to pick a name. I was proud when my idea of mod three members owned decentralized education, but the three is an E. So it's hip and cool. And it's like web three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was a hit. A few days after we picked our community name, Ashley announced that she had registered it as an LLC in her name without consulting anyone beforehand. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. What's up, Obi Wan? How you doing? Then Ashley made an engagement farming tweet about how marginalized communities should be flocking to crypto for opportunity and piss some people off. Yeah. Yeah. Then dug through her tweets and found some crappy ones, including her saying racial slurs on the excuse they were song lyric quotes. Oof. Oof. She got fired from her, her position as community manager at Super Rare and her boyfriend left the same day. Like left her or left the company? I don't know. Uh, I was concerned but figure she doesn't use those words now. She's changed, right? I knew quite a few white people who used slurs and were racially insensitive in the past. We've come around to feeling incredibly ashamed of themselves and figured that was the case here based on my personal interactions and observance of her in more recent times. With the loss of her six-figure salary, she started le leaning heavily into the CEO title she had given herself at Mod3. She began to consolidate decision-making around herself, leaving the other founder and myself in the dark and basically reducing us to employees. Yeah, Phil, yeah. Around this time, a couple months in, we learned she was in solo talks with an investor who wanted 60% of the company for 500K with another 20% should she be let go for any reason. Not until after she'd spoken with other unknown advisors who told her not to do it, did she present the details to us, the founding members. We also said no. She started claiming that we were a six-figure a month company at this point and offered me a salary of 50k a year starting pay. Whoa, awesome. Getting real close to 100k per month in mod 3. Haven't closed our second month lol. We're as big as Senpai Studio now lol. So for context, Senpai Studios is the name of the company um, owned by Harris Heller. And it appears that she is like very jealous. And I don't know what that has anything to do with I don't know what that, what his company has anything to do with what she's doing. They're not the same, but okay. Weird flex. <laughs> oh, hi, Indy. Uh, real, real burn. Oof. I'm, I'm sure Harris Heller doesn't uh, think about her at all, but okay. Uh, Sid Lance. I'm assuming this might be the second uh, founder. Let's see. Since the investors are a no-go, what is our salary situation going to be as we ramp up work? This is in March of 2022. I know we said we'd just start work and worry about back pay when the money is in, but if BB and I are going to start getting the ball rolling, I'd like to have a more concrete discussion amongst all of us about the money situation to avoid confusion later on down the line. I know we have money. I'm not worried about that. And I know you're looking out for everyone's best interests. I also know BB wants to get out of his job and you told him he should put his two weeks in. I have money to pay the pay bills through Inferno, but also no contract with them and they could drop me at any time. It'd be nice to have things nailed down. A few minutes later, salary won't change for sure. 50K for everyone right now. So then we need to nail down contracts ASAP. I reached out to a lawyer about 30 minutes ago to do a call and get us set up ASAP. You're awesome. Thanks, Ashley. I appreciate all the work you do. You crush it, dude. Oh gosh, of course, all dude. I've barely gotten started, to be honest. Up until now, two months in, I had made no money from my work on Mod 3 besides what I was getting from my work on the original client that started all this off, 2k a month for social media management. 
I later found out the agreement with the client she had made without us was for 10k a month. The community manager was making 2k a month like I was, leaving 6k a month going where? The salary never materialized as it was always dependent on getting our contracts and the lawyer was always totally wrapping those up by next week. This went on for months with the lawyer always having some problem or having to find a new lawyer. I didn't get paid for any Mod 3 related work until I offered to take over Twitter so I could start growing the community and getting more exposure for the project. So she started paying me what was supposedly a regular Twitter manager pay of 2k a month. I've since found out she routinely paid less than this for squad members. She kept saying I'd get my director's salary soon and saw no reason I wouldn't be getting 100k next year. What's up, Moosh? We then stalled progress for roughly a month because she hired someone as a project manager out of the blue We ended up, who ended up as a bad fit and caused division among the team. Once that situation was handled, things started to crumble and my suspicions grew. I found out she was telling potential clients that we'd help launch, quote, dozens of successful projects, when at that point we'd only ever had 12 clients total. She used projects that we had never worked on as examples of our success. Occasionally people would ask me about projects like Antonym that were around before we even started because she said we'd worked on them. Are we involved with a project called Antonym, asked Sid. He's asking me how that went too. Ashley says, we'd have been, we'd have, we'd have been, we have been, we'd have, we'd have been. Pay was always sporadic. She always seemed to be trying out a new payroll software or getting PayPal suspended or the business bank account frozen, leading to delays of weeks on end. Hmm. Wow. Interesting. That's, uh, okay. A lot of this was due to the fact that she never set up contracts and payment processes for clients. Instead, hunted payment down herself for every client when she remembered they owed money. However, this always seemed to be her last priority, and she frequently disappeared for days at a time, leaving us, the other founders, to try to communicate to our squad why they weren't getting paid still. And frequently worrying about payment myself. She claimed in April that the payment issue was finally taken care of, that she had automated it, then continued to hunt payment manually and switch payment processors several times, leading to massive delays, headaches, and stressful rent weeks for our team. On in April 27th, 2022, Ashley says, Oh shit, big news. Our bank account and our payment automator finally approved. I don't have to chase payments anymore. Let's go. Interesting. At one point, I was almost four weeks late on payment for our client, and I was hassling Ashley to hunt it down so I could be paid. She said she was trying, couldn't get a hold of them, too busy, would meet with them tomorrow. Eventually, I contacted the client himself and requested that he pay us. He said he'd paid her 10 grand at the beginning of the month and showed me a screenshot. When I presented her with this information, she told me he was a liar and had only paid two days earlier, but that she hadn't noticed until today. So she was sending me pay now. Oh my God, this is so bad. I'm cringing so hard right now. It's so bad. I mean, it's just so obviously like pathological liar and scammer right here. Like, oh my God. Um, I, I gotta say, I have been CEO of uh, a company and we've closed a couple deals with some big clients and um, I have had zero issues getting paid. It's amazing what uh, you can do when you 
have contracts in place and um, you don't scam people. I I think uh, I've I've been maybe uh, three to four days late sometimes paying people out. Um, that's that's about it. It's it's not that hard. It, it, it's it's really not that hard. This became a consistent issue with almost everyone on the squad being owed money at one point, sometimes months work worth of back pay. She would pay up a couple of people, say everyone was caught up, and to message her with issues to keep the chatter out of public comms, then disappear again. This is the future of business. Um, I don't, I don't do, I don't even have, uh, right now, we don't even use, um, like a payroll system. I mean, I, I do it manually. I mean, it takes like, you know, half an hour, but it gets done and it, it, everyone gets paid. Okay. Everyone is paid up now, except blank slash blank teams for May. Blank hasn't hit payment date yet. And I have reached out to blank for payment. So just waiting on that. If you have not been paid yet for any current projects, please DM me. After this message, I confirmed that at least two of our squad members were still owed money from previous projects they'd worked on months before, but Ashley had paid up on the projects they were working on currently. These old projects had abused the lack of contracts and her lack of ambition in hunting down payments, along with her ignoring myself and the other founders request for a two week service cutoff period for any non-payment. And now it seems like the squad members just aren't getting paid for all the work that they did. <laughs> you aren't trying to scam people though. So yeah, that's the difference. She frequently spoke of building runaway for the business and talked about the Coinbase account we had with 20 K plus on top of our fiat business account and some ETH Ethereum kicking around that had depreciated massively since we had been paid with it. When I suggested we use some of these things to pay people we owed money, that was usually met with, quote, I might have to, but I'm really hoping I can get that client to pay. Like, I did not go to business school and I'm baffled. I am I mean, this just sounds like a lie if you can't get your client to pay. If you have a, a contract that has the framework for when you expect pay, it's really not hard. Meanwhile, our squad members, I mean, it just, it, it sounds like a lie. Oh yeah, I'm waiting for the client. I'm waiting for, oh yeah. I'm, I'm waiting oh, any minute now, any minute. Okay. I wonder how much money she actually got herself. Yeah. Meanwhile, our squad members are thousands of dollars and need to pay bills because she didn't think it was important to get official contracts made and payment systems figured out before using people's labor. The, the mind blowing thing is this is not, yeah, this is not the first business that she has built. Like that's what's mind blowing. So how do you not know how to do any of this or claim that? Like I would just wouldn't even buy it. You don't know how to, you don't know to do contracts. The other founder had worked with her on her previous venture stream coach. And during a meeting with me at her most frustrated point, he said he saw the same cycle repeating of her cashing in on people's efforts and passion, ghosting, rinse and repeat. Why would you work with her again? She cut her availability, making it even more difficult to reach her. Mondays, no meetings until 2 p.m. Weekdays, no meetings. Fridays might show up for a little bit before leaving for the weekend. She showed up in Discord and frequently ignoring DMs and pings for days before coming in, acting like nothing had happened, all the while posting her best life on Instagram. I'm ashamed of all the horrible projects she brought on for the group to work with. Some turned out to be straight up rug pulls because she didn't vet them well, prioritizing Whoever agreed the highest payment tier. One of these rug pulls put the nail in the coffin for my time at mod three. An early project turned out to be a follow botted mess with unrealistic expectations and founders that didn't want to be around. Just hire a team to build for them and cash in. I followed her IG. She was making it seem like she had her life together and was kicking ass taking names. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, that's the con, right? Is like, 
hollow motivation like hey you got this you're gonna kick butt today i mean that's her whole shtick is yeah you you're gonna crush it you're doing great and it's like you like it's just it's just so, it's just so fake it's so fake it's always been fake it comes across as fake if you constantly tweet like that and talk like that it just no one is buying into your crap This project had been brought to us by a product development group that Ashley had connected with and was convinced was the best way to get clients. Still all uncontracted on our end. When they didn't mint out, they went to the project development group and demanded their money back. The project dev group then demanded the money back from us so they could pay the angry rug pulling client, which was around 10K from what I was told. So a little context for those who aren't Web3 savvy. Uh, rug pull is a term that is, um, I don't know if it's it, it, like, if it's unique to the Web3 space, but it's very commonly used because there's a lot of Web3 slash NFT projects that basically this is why NFT people hate NFTs, by the way, is because they all make these wild claims about what they're going to do, what it's going to be, what it's going to mean, and they they basically get a lot of people to buy into the project and then they disappear and they take the money and they run. So that's what it, and, and minting refers to um, basically making NFTs. You like, you know, you have a thousand of a minted project. It's like a thousand mints. I don't know if I'm, I'm using the, the vernacular properly, but basically you have a thousand. There's only a thousand available. That's they're minting new NFTs. Okay. Myself and the other founder told her this was ridiculous. They paid for the services rendered and had at that time only even paid us for half the time. Our squad worked on the contract because Ashley didn't pull them off the job once payment failed to materialize for the second month. Rug pulls are a nice way to say theft. Yes. She agreed and went on her way. A week later, we had more issues with payment. I was owed pay as usual, along with a couple others. And during a meeting, I suggested we use some of the stockpile of money we must have kicking around at this point from months of her claiming we are a six figure a month company. We could use this money to pay up the people who needed it now, who are counting on this for their bills and then keep hunting down payment from clients later. She said all accounts were at $0. She decided to refund the client anyways to preserve the relationship she had built with the project development agency and that had drained all of the company's funds. As recently as May 4th in her newest YouTube video, she refers to the great success of Mod3 and how her awesome new company is pulling in six figures a month. After that, Every time I was paid, she had to transfer money from her personal accounts to Mod3 to pay me. That raised some red flags. I started to feel lost and disillusioned, ashamed that I'd actively tried to build this group up so much, and now Ashley was using people in the same way as the systems I was trying hard to replace. In early June, she had disappeared for a full 10 plus days without a word to anyone. Up until now, four days was her max. She was active on Insta and Twitter, but ignored all messages from the squad, ignored Discord, ignored emails, and requests for payment. A couple of our squad members were going on over a month without pay and had to go to the client directly to get what was owed. That client found the information that was linked above and decided to cut ties immediately. I was contacted by the squad working on the account since I was still an admin in Mod3 Discord and they requested I wipe every trace of them from the server. This paired with my own frustrations led me to wonder what they had found, so I started an alt account and found that Google Doc from Harley that I linked. Until now, I had either been blocked by her worst detractors because they saw me as a minion of hers, or I had blocked them for being what I saw as just rude to me for associating with her. I completely bought into her story that it was cancel culture and these people just hated to see her win. Oof. Oh. It makes a little more sense now. Huh. 
it's weird how people the people who cry against cancel culture suck it's that we just we just hate to see her win guys we're jealous we're envious uh we're mean cruel people it makes a little more sense now the pieces fit together and formed a picture of a serial entrepreneur a learner a learner i don't know what that means i'm gonna look that up learner a person who is learning a subject or skill well no that's learner i don't know what that means maybe it's a typo i'm not sure uh, who like to jump on the bandwagon and milk profit, claiming cancel culture or mental health struggles when called out for her years-long patterns of behavior. This is a great paragraph. This is the this is the best paragraph I've ever seen in my life. This is the story. This is the best summary of Ashley Christ. Of, of, of the followers, I would say the followers of Ashley, Ashley Christ who buy into her grift. She's a grade A grifter. There was no way I could keep working with her on a project that didn't align with my values, let alone the fact that it was being used to create the framework for the organization putting hours into creating forms, spreadsheets, organizational structure, designing graphics, exploring blockchain integration ideas with nothing but unfounded promises and a sporadic bare bones wage. So I told the squad that I was done, apologized for the past few months and requested payment for the last weeks of work. Along with myself, a few other squad members voiced their concerns in the group chat about payment, lack of communication, etc. It took her three days to even notice and reply to us. Breaking news, we've all just been blocked just for watching the stream, probably. She hadn't even noticed that the client I mentioned had cut ties. They sent her an email explaining their decision. She says she never got it. Another instance in the inconsistent theme of gaslighting to preserve her influence or image. This brand she built was her biggest concern. How to get engagement. What was the best niche to fill to grow follower count the fastest? In a call a couple weeks before the end, she lamented that crypto Twitter was dead and wondered if it was even worth tweeting anymore since engagement was so low and the growth potential was gone in her eyes. I told her I had been enjoying Twitter more lately and had been having fun meeting people and finding new projects. She said, quote, I just don't think NFTs are a good investment. Why spend my money on them? She then started talking about how she needed to observe the market for a little while a little while and found, find what was pulling engagement so she could transition her brand, which it seems she has started to do. Commissioning custom artwork to revamp her aesthetic and move on to the next grift. Here we go. The next. Oh, my gosh. As someone who is positioning themselves in the NFT community as a builder, a contributor, it would make sense to me that you'd at least have a small collection of projects you like instead of your main wallet, Ashney.eth, being a wasteland and not believing NFTs are worth buying. Or talking on Instagram about how you've liquidated all your crypto holdings. Remember that Mod3 Coinbase account that had 20k a while ago? Seems odd now. And now you can't figure out how to get your hands on them while you simultaneously say your personal net worth is almost gone. Hey, do you know if you can cash out from Coinbase? I know you can sell, but I can't figure out how to move it into a bank account. I've never had a problem cashing out. I added my cash up and that's my offboarding route. Also, to give you all transparency into what I'm experiencing slash the moves to be made based on the market. Mod 3 traffic has obviously slowed a lot. We've talked about the reasons, my lack of social presence and general market conditions. We're going to need to take the route most businesses are taking right now, operating lean AF and looking at other areas for revenue. 
I've been working on a local marketing arm the last week, happy to send info to anyone who wants to see it, that I believe has potential to be helpful. Brad already closed one deal as said above. Also had meetings with two people to discuss LinkedIn website grant programs, but those will take a while to complete. On a personal note, almost all of my personal net worth is gone because of the market crash. At this point, I have no choice but to look for a full-time role somewhere stable and work on Mod 3 when I can. I understand this is going to be disappointing and TBH effing sucks. Kind of wish we had agreed to that 500k investment now. The good news is, working for another company helped us drum up a lot of business in the past, so maybe it will again? And this time, we do have a lot of lessons we've learned to make it a better experience overall. I'll continue following up on payments and teams. Please DM me if you'd like an update about where you're at and I haven't given it. If you're feeling totally disillusioned by this, I understand I'm happy to discuss and DM call or part ways entirely. Going to see you on this for the night and be back tomorrow. All this will be spun by her as cancel culture. She went through a bad breakup, trauma. She was off her medication. She felt manic. She's learning just like she always does. She'll go quiet for a while, then pop up with a new gig, a new brand face. I just want to make sure that every time she does, there's a record and hopefully eventually she won't keep fooling people. She has already, as you can see above, spun the failure of Mod 3 and the disappearance of the funds as purely market failure alongside the fact that she didn't want to be on Twitter after she got canceled and fired from Super Rare. The truth is the failure is from months of neglecting to set up the basic framework of a business. Refusing to be transparent with the team, she asked to join her, declining help when offered, consolidating power around herself so no one else could act, then failing to act when she was called upon. Given the years-long pattern and behavior, it's hard not to feel at least some of this was intentional and possibly malicious. You don't say. At this point, I'm just happy to be done and moving on, but I believe in transparency and I don't want to see anyone else get wrapped up in this person's next attempt to squeeze capital from a community she clearly doesn't understand, from people she doesn't seem to actually care about beyond what she can get from them as a commodity. This isn't a vendetta against her. I don't want to see her harassed over this. I just want people to know what they're getting into and I want to apologize to the people who've been affected, Sid. Um, well, well, well. This is, um, this didn't come across your timeline because I'm pretty sure this was the day that Roe v. Wade got, um, canned by the Supreme Court. So, um, it was, a uh, uh, more important things. So yeah, this, um, if you guys want to read this on your own time, if you know someone who has, is in connection with Ashley Christ and you want to tell them to run away very, very fast, uh, here is the link to this document. If you need to reference that, there you go. There's definitely been some scammy behavior, but I also think there's a lot of negligence which resulted in scammy behavior that makes sense. At this point, the negligence is... Um, I mean, what, what do you, what do you say? Do you excuse it? You're like, oh, I, I'm just, I'm an experience. No, because she has a previous business. I don't know if she still does the stream coach Academy. Um, but if you want the comparison, it is linked here. So this is, the, this is the recent story. This is a year ago. This is just over a year ago. Um, Okay with it has uh experiences of tons of people this this one has a even more um links by the way a ton of stuff okay so yeah dizzy i mean i yeah i don't know how they can they can change it if it's already printed but this is not her first rodeo at this point it's a it's a pattern behavior that's being established here. And it sucks to see um, people with good intentions being manipulated and um, harmed and, and uh, taken advantage of. So, um, 
Again, I don't know. I don't know if Stream Coach Academy is still a thing. I don't know what what the link is. Stream Coach TV. When's the last time they tweeted? February. Okay, so maybe maybe it's not a thing anymore. That's good. Or maybe it's just not a thing on Twitter, and and uh, I I don't know. This is as much as I know. It's not really as far as I know. There comes a point where you actually have to call her what she is, a scam artist. There's a difference between, um, look, there's a difference between, like, forgetting payments or messing up and making a mistake with, like, one client, one lack of contract, and maybe, like, one round of payments, okay? But if you do this consistently for months, with multiple clients, lack of contracts, and lack of payments to an entire team of people. It's just not like, oopsie, I didn't know better. It's, hey, uh, you, you you suck at your job. Um, and like, you're you're probably, uh, I mean, you're, you're, you're clearly scamming people if you're not paying them for their work and saying, oh, uh, my bank account is suspended. Uh, my PayPal is, is frozen. Uh, Oh, they're not paying. Oh. Accidental fraud and negligent fraud is still fraud at the end of the day. Payment processing on the stream coach site is still active, so she definitely she can definitely still take money from folks. Not even following stream coach. Come on, leave a follow. I'm not following this. Absolutely not. I'll probably get blocked by the end of the day from seeing this page. <laughs> What's up, Forex? Yeah, I'm not sure, Gabby. I'm not sure. Someone's saying that you can still buy stuff on here, but I'm I'm not. I'm not sure. What's up, Techno? How you doing? So, um, so again, props to, to Harley for spending precious energy, putting this all together and um, and, and boosting this new tweet um, about the mod three stuff, because I, I would not have seen it uh, otherwise. Makes me friggin sick. Yeah, it, it's 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 just so frustrating. And I talked about this like a little bit ago, but it wasn't during the segment. Um, so I don't know if I um, I don't know if people missed it, but when this happened last year, I didn't comment on it, at least not significantly so, um, because I was worried about being perceived as a competitor, just like trying to take advantage of the moment. And in hindsight, I wish I had said something because if, uh, if someone is scamming some someone and scamming people and it's in my business, it's like i want to protect streamers like that's my whole goal is to educate and advocate for streamers and i feel like not saying something is a failure to do that um you know even if people might say oh you're just saying this because you know you you also do streaming education but um i mean yeah in reality like what she has done and, and the way that she has scorched our industry has made it impossibly hard to um, fight the stigma that she's created with coaching and education around streaming. Gaming careers, thank you so much for the sub. I appreciate that. Hope you're doing well. Thank you so much. Uh, Ashley definitely would have framed it as that if you had responded in the moment, yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't know. It's like, it's hard to say, but yeah. Um, but yeah, n n seeing everything over again, like a second time in a whole different industry, just it's yeah, it sucks. It, it, it sucks to see. And, and, and I will say that if I catch wind that she is still running her stream coaching program, I will do what I can to warn people of it, of that business um and the issues the repeated issues that have uh that she has created not only in her stream coach academy but also in other businesses and realms as well 
Um, she's done a lot of damage to our industry and now others too. And glad it's being discussed so that more people can see. Keep doing what you're doing. Big fan. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you for the kind words. Hunter, thank you for the raid. What? What time is it? Where are you? You streamed? What? Did you? What? Where? How? How? How did you stream? <laughs> Great question. How did you stream? I've been getting up early. Really? I love that. That's awesome. What did you stream today? Thank you so much for the raid. How to stream good. Building digital communities for 10 years. A little dead right now, but that's okay. Founder mod 3XYZ stream coach pass. Yeah. So it still has the stream coach in the, in the front part. What's up, Nightingale? Good morning. It's a hard line to walk because we've seen so many patterns of opportunity chasing. I'm not sure what the right play would have been either. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I I I I leaned on the conservative side, but my first streamer that is a decent streaming advice video out there and she still gets called fake sometimes because of Ashni, yeah. Um City Skylines. Got therapy in five minutes. Bye, Hunter. What's up, Gregel? I think the most trustworthy pat pattern is probably having unaffiliated folks support prop up a more trusted source. We saw this with the OBS versus Streamlabs slash Logitech shenanigans last year, and it was a community who rallied to the cause. I mean, for sure. Yeah. What's up, Virtual Farmer? Hero, enjoy the lurk. Thanks for being here. I'd say with anything, get the testimonials. Yeah. Yeah, well, so that's the thing. That's, I mean, that's why we, we go through, like, this doc is because there is a lot of evidence and screenshots. Uh, a lot of people have chimed in on their experience with the uh, Stream Coach Academy stuff. A lot of people. I mean, part of the controversy was that she would charge people and then they either wanted a refund, didn't get it, never got their coaching, like, just ghosting Seems to be a pattern behavior here. The transition from Vi Hunter to Oh Hi Gregel just killed me. <laughs> well, I know that Gregel's coming in here and it's gonna be trolling. So yeah, this this one is about the the Stream Coach Academy one. Um, I'm not gonna go through the whole thing, but the first part was. Uh, before returning to streaming, Ashley started a secret group called Project Partnership where she said she would help a group of people get to partner. She claimed that she, a non-streamer at the time, and partner streamers would advise the group on how to reach partner. Instead, she pitched using a bot website with embed streams and encouraging, uh, wait, I lost my line, encouraging the group to watch each other there to boost view counts. When that didn't go down well with the group, she decided that she wanted to prove to the group how easy it was to be partnered and went back to streaming with the group and her moderators watching her every stream because the group was around 80 people. Which is fascinating because as it says, like the Stream Coach Academy, like her whole angle is um, I, qu I quit streaming. I couldn't do it. I was streaming to one viewer for years and then I came back and then within months I got partnered. And I, I yeah, that like and, and if, if your whole thing of getting partnered is well, you were promising partnership to all these people and then you're like, well, but me first. Okay. Um, and then you get partnered and you're like, oh, okay, well, let's stop doing this. I'm familiar with this scheme. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, the thing is, it's not a good, it's just not a good scheme because being a partner doesn't make you more successful. It doesn't do really much of anything if you get partnered like that's the whole thing with partner pushes it has if you're going to go for partner you you, you don't want to try to get as many hollow viewership numbers as possible just forcing people to watch your stream because what happens is you get partnered you hit your goal and then everyone's like okay well what next like and then the people that were there just to help you they leave and all of a sudden you're a partner with 40 viewers and you're like and then you're crushed because it, you're not really, it's hollow. You're not really doing anything to grow. You're not actually growing. If it takes you a year, 
longer to get partnered, but you do it the right way, you're, you're just going to be better off overall. You're not going to collapse after you get to your, your, your goal. That check mark is some validation for folks. It is, I mean, it is validating. It's an achievement. And I don't, I don't like judge people for wanting to get there. I get, I get it. Um, but it doesn't get you more money. In fact, I would say it might have the reverse effect where people who see the badge and they see the partnership. I personally think that a lot of viewers, I'm gonna go full screen because we're not looking at this right at the second. A lot of viewers will kind of perceive you as being successful. And so they will probably gravitate to someone else who might be on the verge of partner or perceived as smaller, aka making less money. I, I experienced this, um, you know, as someone who is... <coughs> as... Uh, Borker, Borker says hi. Don't you get a million dollars when you get the verified badge? We'll be Ray Bork. <laughs> uh, um, you know, as someone who who grew as a community-focused streamer, when I got partnered and I tried to grow, 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 and I kept growing, I it was almost like being on a treadmill, like where you're you're getting new people in but you're always losing people because you're getting too big for some people and then you lose people and then your viewership doesn't go actually go up. You're like kind of, I mean, that's why um, I, I think a lot of people just kind of like if you, if you're just plateauing in viewership, you're actually doing pretty, pretty decently. If you're just staying the same, it's not a bad thing um, because you're constantly fighting atrophy for a million different reasons, right? Like people, move on to the next person, you get too big, people don't like the game you're playing, uh, people get busy with their life, uh, they, they find the next new hot streamer, whatever it is. I, ha I have a few friends who saw growth after disabling their badge, plus they noticed when in a chat, people talk to them normally the moment they took it off. This is anecdotal, of course, but once making partner, it took me a year to get back to the same viewership levels and income I had right before partnership. It was a strange phenomenon, yeah. I just need to get partnered, then I'll be happy. Uh, spoiler alert, alert, you will, it will not change. Um, you, like, you'll always want the next thing. I mean, same thing with viewership too. You're like, if I just get to 100 viewers, I'll be good. I'll be good, I'll be fine, I'll be great. And then you get to 100 and you're like, okay, so I am not happy. You know what? It kind of reminds me of a movie I just watched called Soul. And I know I'm a little late to the party. But I watched Soul uh, last week and it kind of had the same message, which it was like this guy who had a very mundane life and believed his goal was to be uh, a jazz musician. Finally gets soul like your soul. Finally gets the opportunity of his dreams to play alongside a prolific jazz singer. And um and then does the thing there's a lot in between that but <laughs> very tldr does the thing and afterwards is like okay well now what what do i do next you know like soul little queen no just soul soul not solipsis soul what's up how up spoilers whatever I am a famous jazz singer. Nice soul. I'm I'm glad. That's awesome. <laughs> um. So yeah. Anyways, we're we're totally going on a tangent right now. Um. Back to what what we're showing here, which is like the original Stream Coach Academy scam doc. Um. So there's like a lot of different testimonials here. There's DMs. There's pictures of DMs. Um. Okay, so blah, blah, blah. Um, apparently the Patreon was set up in like a really um, awful way that was like misleading people. Um, examples of her just like not following up. Someone who paid $300 was never coached. A paying Patreon client, another one. 
um other things just uh, uh, things testimonial from a teacher at stream coach academy I'm just embarrassed. I've been an improv teacher for 17 years. I t I've taught classes for streamers in real life and needed to find a way to bring it online. I thought doing it through an established service would work best. I was promised help with all the things I'm bad at like promoting. She never listened to me on anything. When I told her it was really confusing to sign up for the class, she shrugged it off. I wanted to charge $10. She convinced me to charge 25. I would ask her for things to help Promote the class. I asked a week before Black Friday to get a promo code for the class. I got it the second week in December. Then after the cancel tweet, I knew I needed to get out and did as soon as I could. I told her to cancel the class. It remained up and people bought it. I had to go in using the passwords I had and cancel the class. The person tweets, I'm no longer affiliated with Stream Coach. I do not tolerate racism and will not teach alongside people who have a lot to learn. Oh, wow, I was not expecting this. Did something happen? Racism? What? <laughs> who, who did the racist? Who did it? Yeah, there's a there's a lot here. Um, so much to unpack. What's up, Blackjack? Improv canceled. So this happened. She's like, yeah. Then she she always tweets about cancel culture and like she's a victim and everyone's jealous of her success. Um. Blah, blah, blah. I can't, I can't go to her Twitter on my main. If only there was a way to get around that. Oh, wait, there is. So, um, when this happened, so back to what's, what's more recent. This came out June 24th. This is less than a month ago, okay? This 11-page document, the story of, of what happened with her most recent project. She did not acknowledge this one time. She did not acknowledge this, um, and I mean, to be fair, I don't think, um, I think there was a lot going on, uh, for the public at that time, so. <sighs> yeah, it's pretty bad. We've been so conditioned to look for symbols of success as a culture. I feel that, feel like folks don't really understand what it really means to be successful. It's title chasing, not understanding that the title is a reward for achievement and not a prerequisite for success. Sure, titles can open doors and unlock new opportunities, but one needs a foundation before you can build a house. I mean, I, I think that's a... Well, I think that's a particular... Okay, so I think... Streaming and, um, and Web3 are particular markets that are susceptible to grifts because of um, the idea, the lucrative idea of you know, getting rich quick, getting successful, making a lot of money, right? Like, oh my gosh, I could be like ninja with streaming or with, you know, the Web3 stuff. Oh my gosh, look at the MTs, look at all this money. There's so much money here. Web3 is my trigger word, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, So it's, it's easier to prey on people because people are looking for that easy answer. They're looking for, they're looking for the secret sauce. And that's the thing, like, that's why, you know, like, I work so hard to build SolarStream because, there, there, first of all, spoiler, there's no secret sauce. There's no, like, hey, you pay $15 a month, you're going to find, you're going to finally figure out what the secret is. Because if there was a secret, guess what? I tweet about that stuff all the time. I tweet about like how to be successful as a streamer. It's not about, it's not about uncovering a secret. It's about learning concepts and figuring out how to apply them to your own stream. I spent $500 to eat your secrets. 
Um, okay, so anyways, let me find the OG tweet. So if you missed it, here's the tweet. I'm actually gonna, um, I'll boost it on my, my account too so more people see this because I don't feel like enough people saw this. Retweet, quote tweet. Um, stream coach, founder, Ashley Christ pivots to a new industry, does the same scummy manipulation. Please, please don't fall for her. Um, patterned manipulative Ma pattern predatory behavior. Um, Retweet to spread awareness. Okay. This type of stuff mirrors so much of what happens in other entertainment industries, preys on people's desire, and a correct answer and success. And that's why... That's why I care so much, because this is my industry. This is our industry. And this is an industry that I am working so hard, not the Web3, I'm sorry, not not this specifically Web3, but um, streaming, stream, streaming and the stream coach stuff. This is an area where I'm working so hard to do good and to provide real resources out there. So to have someone going around and like scamming people front, left, right and center, like, you know, it's, it's like... I mean, it sucks and people are getting hurt and streamers are getting hurt. Like streamers, a lot of aspiring streamers are kind of like desperate for um, that, you know, that easy solution that they, if I, if I just do this, um, really it takes a lot of, a lot of hard work and, and education um, and good education too. Not just like, hey, um, you know, just ask all your friends to watch to get you partnered and then uh, go and do the same for them and then create this whole like follow botting, view botting, like fake engagement chain. I mean, it's like the whole follow for follow, host for host, like all that stuff is just hollow. It's people searching for that easy answer. If I just do this, I will grow. And it's just not the, it's just not the truth. I believe if you centralize information and provide high quality and um, and diverse perspectives, you can definitely make your journey easier. But there's nothing that will, you know, that you're not doing that's going to make you like an instant overnight success. It's still going to take hard work and a little bit of luck. <laughs> What's up, Chaos? How you doing? What's up, Ninja Flippy? How you doing? How's it going? Okay, so I tweeted that out. Uh, you can feel free to share that. Check it out. Um, it definitely is deserving of more attention. I don't know if... Uh, I don't know. Again, I don't know if she's still doing the stream coach thing. I'm not sure. But, I mean, the site is still live. I'm not going to show the site because I don't want to give it attention. But hire a coach. I mean, there are still two coaches on here. I don't know what, why, but um, I'm sorry, Frostbite. I'm sorry you're melting. I'm not sure if you saw this video uh, or was recommended it. There's a video recently made by Super Eye Patch Wolf that's super relatable to this. Oh, really? No, I I have not seen that. Really, community seems to work well. At least it has for me. Of course, community building is super important. Thank you so much for the heads up, Loco. I'll never be in part of that program, so I should be more cautious. Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I don't know if they still run... Um, programs. Like, so they have, like, coaching that you can just sign up for, but then they have, like, a $500, like, four, five, six-week program, eight-week program. I don't know. Um... I thought I saw... I thought I got an email about it, actually. Um... But it looks like the most recent one was not, it was like in 2021, it looks like. So maybe not, but that's, that's good. I mean, it sucks because I feel like people did try to warn like this person and like the, the other, the web three NFT community about this and like people just get like totally blinded by i mean the veil of lies well said there's so many things you can do to shortcut a lot of the pain points of streaming and so much of it is behind the scenes things making your tech chain more reliable and setting a decent standard of quality understanding taxes and exploring alternative revenue streams those are great none of this is capable of being a silver bullet to success one of the reasons i'm a huge fan of streamer square and solar stream thank you um belthazar thank you very much yeah I mean, that's why we put all this information in one, one place and we don't, I don't know. There's it, like, I, it just doesn't make any sense to me because if you are a grifter and you're, if you're, I mean, if you're just being a grifter, clearly you can get away with it long term. But if you are scamming people and taking people's money and not giving them what they paid for, that's only going to last you so long. Like, why not build something that's authentic and just good? because that's a business i mean i mean the thing is like and her whole the whole whole thing is like she's like a woman ceo and she's a business baddie and all this like whatever lingo and it's like you have run two failed businesses and you scam people and you like you take their, you don't run good businesses you don't run quality businesses why should anyone listen to you about anything There's something about this particular human that also screams, I can do all this until I can't, and then I freak out and don't know how to handle it. Well, if you, like I said, if you, if you run it poorly, it's, it's just not going to last. Sooner or later, the scam will crumble plus high chance of legal consequences. Yeah. Because what she's good at is grifting. Ugh, just like... But I'm I'm just saying why do it that way? I guess like I don't know. It I it doesn't make any sense to me. I I'm like I'm a very highly ethically driven person and it just bo it just boggles my mind like why act like that? Why hurt other people? Like why do something so short term, so short sighted and then be on the run and have like no one trusts you. No no one likes you. I just don't understand. This is this is what we're talking about. This is what we're talking about. Max profits for self then cut and run to the next venture. But you could make so much more money. Like if you're speaking from a business perspective, you would make so much more money if you just did a good thing and like if you just had a long term. Like I like it's just it's just it's not smart it's not very smart that's that's what i'll say about that all right uh this is what we're talking about for those just joining let me run to the restroom really quick chat one sec
All right, what's up soon? Is Loco not on YouTube anymore? No, that's not me. That's <laughs> the video is not me being on not being on YouTube. It's a it's a a video about a, a large creator being not on YouTube anymore. It's interesting because in the old days when a grifter had sucked the town dry, uh, they would just move on to the next town before they got caught. Now it's all just one big virtual town and we do like to talk. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing too. It's like much harder to kind of do that. Um, but, you know, the, she did do it again, so. Um, Yeah, this person that I quote tweeted has so many people blocked because they, I'm guessing that they blocked basically anyone who ever spoke out against Ashney. Good night, A Greens. I agree, not smart like a scammer selling used cars. Some just want that quick payout and don't want long term money. If you're a good and big enough grifter, you can blatantly grift in public and people will continue to go along with it to not look dumb. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, though. Like, um, like, Ashley's not, not large enough of a powerhouse to get away with that kind of stuff. I mean, she's wondering why her engagement is down on her tweets. Like, yeah, I mean, obviously you're tweeting about NFTs and like, I mean, kind of like brainwashy motivational stuff, which... I think a lot of people got this illusion with the first time around a year ago. Um, like, but no one wants to associate with you anymore. Like, like, get out of town. Get out, get, get out of here. Look at the best town meetings to stop the madness. I'm trying to, I'm holding a town meeting, maybe a year too late. Um, but yeah. There's new people entering the industry every day. We all may know about her, but there's thousands who will fall right into her hands. Yes, I mean, this is true. This is true. 